Hi, this tutorial series focusing on the Gambas programming language is intended to introduce people to a useful and easy computer programming experience. I hope this series will let anyone from students to dedicated computer enthusiasts and professionals quickly learn to create useful graphical user interface based programs for Linux. My intent is to focus on an introductory level of understanding of the use of the language so that people can install the language, learn, experiment, and then easily create rather impressive programs which operate within the expectations of any modern computer user. In other words, to create graphical programs that operate on the graphical desktops found on modern computers. Honestly, I also decided to create this series to recapture some of the fun I felt when I first started seriously working with computers. I chose Gambas running on Linux as the ideal vehicle for these goals. Additionally, I am just beginning to seriously use the versions of photo editing, presentation, screen capture, and video editing software on this desktop PC. Also, I am completely new to narration and creating tutorials. So I hope you will bear with me as I learn the ins and outs of the software and the processes of creating these videos. First, why Linux? Well, when I began using computers, I began in an academic environment that used the Unix operating system running on remote, large server computers. Later, I used 8-bit microcomputers. And finally began working with PC compatibles as they evolved. I moved from DOS, a non-graphical computer operating system used on early PCs, to MS Windows and its GUI or graphical user interface. I wrote programs for and maintained systems all along the way using different operating systems and programming languages. Today, Microsoft Windows is the most common operating system on desktop computers, but it is proprietary, closed, expensive, and fails to offer users the freedom to truly control their own computer systems. Linux, on the other hand, was created to be a Unix-like, secure, infinitely customizable, free and open operating system. And the fact is that today, Linux runs most of the internet and most of the supercomputers in the world. Not to mention that most smartphones and smart home devices run some version of Linux. And on the desktop, Linux has gone from being a complex, hard to use oddity for geeks to being a polished, easy to use contender for the desktop space with a lot to recommend it. Linux is a fast, secure, efficient, and easily controllable desktop operating system that, among other things, is free and completely controllable by the user. It has vast software libraries and resources for both users and developers. Now, why Gambas? There are many programming languages. They run the gambit from simple scripting languages that run at a command prompt to incredibly complex and powerful programming environments that can make a computer do virtually anything which it is capable of doing, from simple text editing up to solving the most complex scientific problems. All of these languages have their place, but often a programmer must sacrifice simplicity of use for flexibility and power. In other words, the more powerful and flexible a language is, the more complicated it is to use it to perform complex tasks. And most languages require significant work and knowledge simply to create any standalone programs which can operate within a graphical operating system. Because of these learning curve and complexity issues, two elements were created over the years to facilitate simplified programming. The first occurred way back in the 1960s at Dartmouth College. A high-level programming language was created to make the task of learning and creating programs much simpler. The team at Dartmouth created the BASIC programming language. BASIC, which stands for Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code, was created to facilitate learning the fundamental elements of creating computer programs without needing to understand the ever-changing complex intricacies of the underlying computer designs and operations. Before that, programmers actually had to create programs for the first computers using the ones and zeros understood by the computer hardware itself. Here's an example of binary code. After carefully designing and creating the program, the programmer had to express it in low-level machine code, which was then translated into binary. Then the programmer had to laboriously enter the computer program into the system's memory, often bit by bit, byte by byte. This simple 24-byte example gives you some idea of the difficulty of early computer programming. 
Even simple programs might have hundreds if not thousands of bytes of code needed to perform the simplest functions. And even a single mistake could wreak havoc on the program's operation, requiring hours or days of careful examination to correct and re-enter the program. High-level programming languages like BASIC replace dozens of arcane machine instructions with simple human comprehensible instructions. Another advantage to BASIC was that it was interactive, which meant that the programmer got immediate feedback about the program's operation as it ran. The programmer could modify the program quickly and easily while actually creating it. Before that, if a program didn't operate as expected, it could mean lengthy periods of manually trying to trace and figure out where a logical design error or simple mistype mistake had occurred. Because of these advantages, BASIC became a mainstay of programming education and computer enthusiast culture. In the 1970s, Microsoft actually got its start by creating numerous versions of BASIC for the various microcomputers in that era. The versions of BASIC created by Microsoft for the various early home computers became a vital core element for an entire generation of eager new programmers. Here I am running an emulator that simulates a Commodore 64, which was an early 8-bit computer, and I am going to create a simple BASIC program to display Hello World to show just how simple it is to create programs using the BASIC language. You might note that early versions of BASIC required line numbers. Those are not necessary in Visual Basics, making coding even simpler. Now I'll list the program to show it's in memory. And now I'll run the program. Later, Microsoft also sold other computer languages. But when Microsoft landed the deal to provide the operating system for the IBM PC, Microsoft included the BASIC language as the programming language which came with every PC and compatible. Here I am running an MS-DOS emulator and creating another Hello World program, this time in GW BASIC, the version of BASIC which came standard with DOS-based PC compatibles. And again, I'll list it to show it's in memory. And run it. Notice the similarities. Basic syntax is very simple. Just a list of English-like commands and any variables such as text or numbers that are being manipulated. Now I am going to add a little more complexity to the program and show how easy it is to modify and enhance existing code. In this change, I will be using the line numbers to place my new lines of code in the correct locations within the example program. Line numbers were required in early versions of BASIC so that computers and their programmers could keep track of the order of the code execution. However, Visual Basics are more modern, and the code is written within a fully functional text editor. The BASIC programs, like most other languages, simply execute in the physical order of the instructions as the blocks of code run. Now I am listing the overall program. Now when I run the program again, it will print Hello World five times. The original basic language has faded over the decades, but its characteristics of power and simplicity still make it a useful example for learning and programming. And today, on more modern computers, even newer programming languages, such as Python, owe a debt to the fundamental concepts of simplicity, ease of use, and flexibility, first created as a fundamental element of the basic language's philosophy. The next element that leads us to Gambas is the creation of visual programming languages. 
These languages utilize a drag and drop approach to creating graphical programs. The GUI elements that are familiar to any computer user, menus, buttons, text boxes, etc., are simply selected by a programmer and placed in the program that is being created. All of the complexities required by a program in communicating with the operating system and all of its complex elements are handled by the programming language's development environment. So a programmer can simply use graphical building blocks to quickly create the graphical appearance of the program and then write simple code to achieve the program's desired result. Microsoft released their Visual Basic to facilitate rapid and simplified creation of MS Windows programs in 1991. Visual Basic was a visual language whose programs were written using the basic language's syntax. It was a huge success and enabled anyone from students to experienced IT professionals to easily write programs that could run in the Windows GUI. Visual programming is such a success that Microsoft continues to produce visual programming tools and components as a mainstay of programming for MS Windows. And now Gambas, which recursively stands for Gambas is Almost Basic, which is a running open source joke. The language was started in France and is heavily inspired by Visual Basic, but it is not actually directly compatible with Microsoft Visual Basic, though VB programmers should quickly feel at home using it. Gambas was specifically created to provide a simple visual language for the Linux operating system rather than MS Windows. Also, Gambas is not simply a copy of or derived internally from MS VB. Gambas is designed from the ground up to take the best elements of visual programming and make it as simple and efficient as possible. In short, it is a fun and productive way to program for Linux, and best of all, it's free and open software. Using Gambas is as simple as installing the Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, clicking on Gambas to run it, dragging a few easily recognizable graphical objects onto your program, and writing a few lines of simple basic code, and away you go. You click the Run button in Gambas to test your program, and when you are happy with the way it works, just select Make to create a standalone program. Programming in such a simple way is incredibly fun, and you may even find it to be addictive. But don't think that because Gambas is so easy to use that it isn't a powerful programming environment and language. It is, and you will quickly be able to create very sophisticated programs that run directly within the Linux desktop GUI. The basic programs I showed you earlier were text-based programs. They were easy to write thanks to the simplicity of the basic programming language. However, today computer operating systems are graphical, and creating programs that run in the graphical environment tend to be much more involved and complicated. That is where visual languages come in. They allow the quick and easy creation of fully graphically based programs that any modern computer user will know how to use. Here is a small graphical example program that I created in Gambas in just a few minutes. It demonstrates several common graphical program elements used in modern GUI based programs. This quick demo program doesn't actually do anything other than show the potential for easily creating GUI programs. This program contains a menu system and multiple tabs and on the tabs I have placed different graphical program elements such as radio buttons, slider controls, text boxes, and picture elements. Here I'm going to run through a small number of program elements. As I said, a menu, tabs, radio buttons, check boxes, a slider control, labels, a text box, buttons, Here's a drop down menu, and a graphic image. As you can see, all of the program elements are functional, and through simple basic code, they can all be used and communicate with each other. 
One of the most impressive things is that I literally put this program together in a matter of minutes without any advanced planning. Just dragging and dropping the graphical elements, a little basic code, and the program was done. When I was done, I saved the project and then selected Menu Choice Make to create a fully functional, executable program. As a quick afterthought, I even put a little Easter egg in the program. If the text box on tab 3 contains the phrase, when you choose quit from the menu, you get a final message as the program ends. All it took was a couple of lines of basic code and another quick make command. I hope all of this has piqued your curiosity and that you will consider experimenting with Gambas to see just how easy, powerful, and fun visual programming in Linux can be. Additionally, it should be noted that Gambas can now also be run on MS Windows and the Mac, though for my first video tutorial series I will be focusing on Gambas running under Linux. Thanks for taking a look at this overview video and joining me as I explore the Gambas language and making these videos. The following tutorial videos should be shorter and more concise, focusing on specific areas of the Gambas language. In the next part of this tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to install Gambas onto a computer running the Linux operating system. And we will test the installation by creating a simple Hello World program.